Well, it's a special time of week where we think about leaving it all behind for a few days or a week or two, whether for business or pleasure. Travel is top of mind for many of us. Uh, but if you want to travel and travel well, you got to talk to the best. That's why we got the best. Joining me now for Peter's Pans and Picks is CBS travel editor Peter Greenberg. Mr. Greenberg, thank you for coming on. Where are you right now? Today I'm in Lima, Peru. Wow. Doing? Actually recording my radio show and also giving a speech here on artificial intelligence and travel, which we should talk about sometime. Okay. Uh, Producer Dylan, let's mark that down next week. That will be a topic. He says you got it. Okay. It's been another turbulent week for airlines. United is dealing with its fourth air emergency in about a week. At least 50 people were hurt after a Boeing plane abruptly drops midair, sending passengers to the ceiling. Boeing is now officially under investigation over the Alaska Airlines blowout. And one of the whistleblowers against Boeing, John Barnett, dead by suicide. Did I, did I miss anything? Uh, no, well, that's a good start, uh, but but let's make, be sure that you know the the plane that had the turbulence was not a United Airlines plane, that was another airline from from Chile. But the bottom mm -hmm. line here is we've got to put all this in perspective. The airline incidents that United had, had is not out of the norm. If you take a look at the total number of operations they have, this month in March, United will have 131,000 flight operations, and we're talking about four incidents. The real problem here is not that. The real mm -hmm. problem here it goes back to the assembly line, goes back to the inspections, and goes back to what you just mentioned, the reopening of a criminal probe by the U.S. Justice Department against Boeing. Let's not forget that Boeing settled for $2.5 billion, a criminal probe that was launched against it by the Justice Department in the wake of the two Boeing 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. But that settlement was a conditional one, mm -hmm. and it was conditional on the fact that, or on the hope, that Boeing would not repeat its behavior. Well, there's, an ins there's basically some indication here that they have repeated their behavior, and that's why the Justice Department has reopened that criminal probe, so stay tuned. Okay. Well, they've been called the Ozembic of airline seats. Southwest Airlines is responding to social media roasting of its new seat design, then referred to as lawn chairs and compared to slabs of granite. Southwest says ah, the images were only 2D, uh, so they couldn't show the cosmetic look of their design and the renderings were not yet scaled for comfort. Uh, as someone who flies uh, more than pretty much everyone else, uh, did you see the renderings and what were your thoughts? Oh yeah, I've, I've seen the renderings, I've also seen the seats. You can't use it, you can't relate it to a slab of granite because the real reason why these seats are going on the plane is granite weighs too much. It's mm. weight. And they're designing these seats to be ultra thin, ultra lightweight because about fuel burn and cost of fuel and there's a shot of it right now. Uh, look, if anybody tells you they've been, they've been sitting in an extremely comfortable airline seat, please let me know. Right. Uh, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about width or scrunchiness. I'm talking about actual plushness. At least in coach, most of these seats don't even recline. Southwest does a better job of others than that. But I've seen seats that have a button for recline that are purely ornamental. So you know what? It's BYOP time. You know what that stands for? Bring your own pillow. You can't yeah. expect the airlines to fluff it up for you. All right. You wrote a blog post a few days ago about a sneaky way people are getting entire rows on flights. I've seen a few videos. People are like, oh, look, I got a whole row. You can, uh, you say the traveler kind of books one discounted ticket in their name and coach, then books two refundable tickets, seat next to them, then 45 minutes before the flight, they cancel those tickets, uh, get a full refund, boom, done. Whole row to yourself. But there's a hitch here, and probably the airlines are catching on, right? Well, the airlines have caught on a long time ago. It does, it's not illegal to do that. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're buying a fully refundable ticket, you have the right for a full refund and at, at any time. But if you do it 45 minutes before a flight that's not full, you stand a reasonably good chance of getting those two seats next to you in that full row of coach. However, it doesn't violate the law, but it does violate an airline contract. And every airline says you, passengers are, are forbidden to book seats for which they have no intention of using. Mm. So if there's a pattern here, by the way, the airlines have the algorithms to find out about travel patterns and they catch you, guess what? You get thrown off the plane. So I'm not encouraging people to do it, but if you do so, you're doing it at your own risk because the airlines have sophisticated ways to know that you've done that. Yeah, I'm sure they know. 
They uh, they probably got kind of big bro technology, I'm sure. Uh, Peter Greenberg, our thanks from Lima, Peru. Good luck with the show. I look forward to talking to you about AI and traveling very soon. You got it, man.